Hello everybody, this is Chris from CSS Tricks with video screencast number 67. Sorry, there's been a little bit of a break here between 66 and 67. It's been a few weeks. I've moved to Chicago, so this is the first screencast from the Chicago branch of CSS Tricks. It's very lovely here. My office is a little bit nicer, so I'm glad to be back at it. I posted an article just a few days ago called this text blocks over image it's a pretty simple technique here's the uh, like a screenshot of what the end result of is you have an image and you have this kind of trendy technique where you title the image by putting some text over it in kind of a a jagged box uh, with some transparency some transparent black in that box could be any color but this is the point point. and so you know it's a pretty simple technique but there's a few things that I thought made it kind of interesting for one thing we'll go down here I went through the schematics of what the HTML looks like it we're gonna go through this too we're not gonna go through this we're gonna well you'll see in a minute I went through what the HTML looked like and what the what the CSS has to be and uh, 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 fixed a problem this is where I thought it started to get a little interesting is that these uh, in order to get this jagged padded box around the text, you know, you kind of need to use an inline element. So we used a span and then put a break in that span. But what happens there is that it, it cuts right at the end of the text and then it starts again flush left. So uh, how we solved that was looking for that break element and, and putting some extra spans in there to, to a, apply that padding. So the, the, ultimately the, the, the HTML markup had this you know this header two tag and then it was wrapped in a span and then there was these spacer spans and then the break and then another spacer span and then the closing span for the whole thing there's lots of spans in here to get the job done and you know that's generally regarded as non-semantic it's a bunch of HTML tags that we threw in there just for the purposes of how it looks on the page not describing the content but just uh, for design only and that's generally frowned upon so at the end of the article I said if you want to get rid of all these spans and keep your markup cleaner and more semantic why don't we apply those spans through JavaScript you know pretty socially accepted way to to do this type of thing to affect the get those spans in there without having to screw up the markup so we looked for the h2 tags on the page with jQuery and then we wrapped the inside of it with a span then we looked for the break element and right before and after that break element we added the spacer span so if I click view demo up here you can see you know the end result is basically what you're looking at before I, I put a a different image and different text in there to show you that it didn't just work for that one example it works for any text and images well since we are getting into this this world of jQuery anyway I thought you know we could get rid of basically all of the markup that that I used for this technique and just have an image use its title attribute to kind of caption the image like we're doing here and then basically build a jQuery plugin to do the whole thing and, and 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 I got back to thinking what we've done in these screencasts so far we did it jQuery part one which was just a super duper intro to the syntax of it and some really simple things and then we did jQuery part two which got a little more in depth with what you can actually do and showed a bunch of examples of animating stuff and I never really you know kind of officially continued past there I think we probably touched on jQuery a few times but never did really a part three and I'm like well maybe part three which is that's what this is gonna be is gonna be we're gonna look at some jQuery code and we're gonna make a plugin we're gonna make an official jQuery plugin out of this idea and this code so it all started with this article and this example so I'll open up Coda this is kind of the the examples reservoir on CSS tricks this this folder I have called type over image that's what we were looking at when we looked at the demo that's this that's this code here it has an index.html file and CSS and the two images and a JavaScript file I called the semanticizer which just meant that it you know it kept our code semantic so what I'm gonna basically do is I'm gonna copy this whole project so we have a fresh copy but I don't have to ruin this uh, let's do it right now I'm gonna duplicate it this whole thing and then I'm gonna rename it with plugin at the end and we're gonna kind of rip apart this code and make it into a plugin and you'll see why that's such a neat thing in just a second type over image 
plugin. So we'll open up this folder and start looking at the HTML. This block right here, this div with a class of image, is you know one of those blocks. It has the image inside of it, and then it has an H2 tag which titles that image. So this whole block is responsible for for that that image with the type over it. But wouldn't it be neat if we, you know, what is this div really doing for us? What is this H2 really doing for us? The, the goal is to get rid of all this stuff. Actually put a title attribute on the image. Title. And have that title be this caption. So let's do it there. And let's do it for the second image as well while we're at it. So that's just it's just cleaner markup already. Let's save it and let's get to I think I misspelled this type. I lost an E here. Type over image plugin. Then we'll go type over image plugin and we'll see that we've kind of shot ourselves in the foot a little bit. Not really, but now we're just displaying the images. And you'll see if I roll over it with my mouse, that yellow box pops up that shows the title. That's what titles do in HTML is they pop up that little kind of tool tip box for what the title is. We're going to steal that content, though, and do, work our magic over here and, and, and do our cool little technique over here just with that. So it keeps our markup really, really clean. Uh, so uh, how you name plugins in jQuery is generally they, they they have the word jQuery in their name because it's like completely dependent on the jQuery library. So we're going to call this uh, the type over image. What did I end up calling? Let's call it title block. Title block dot jQuery dot com. That's kind of what you would call a plugin. It's a good naming convention. So we're not going to call it the semanticizer anymore. We're going to call it title block dot jQuery.js. And that code that's in there currently is going to get totally ripped out. And basically, we can just get rid of it now. We're going to start from scratch with that. But then how do plugins work? Why are we making this a plugin? What's the point of doing all this to begin with? Well, I'll kind of show you just how we're going to end up calling it. And maybe that will explain why it's so kind of neat. Let's paste what we, we got rid of from that other file. We're not going to use any of this. But what we are going to do is call, is call the plugin how we want to ultimately call it. So like, like it, let's say it, this is how, how jQuery works. If we, we use a selector in jQuery, that's what a selector is. It's this dollar sign and then two quotes, and then you put uh, in it what you want to select. And these selectors are basically CSS3. Anything that you can do in CSS3, you could do in here. You could type in a CS uh, selector like this, you know, using a pseudo selector. That's a totally valid jQuery selector as well. It supports all this fancy stuff, attribute selectors, it's all kinds of that. Uh, but we, what we want to do is select all the images on our page. So we're just going to put image in there. That's going to return as a set both this image and this image. And then we just do something with it. So with jQuery, we can do stuff like this. We can go hide. Let me save that and jump over to the web. And I'll, if I refresh the page, both of these should just be gone. That didn't work, did it? We want to make sure that we're doing okay here. We're loading the jQuery library. We're loading it from Google here, which we don't need to get into. It's just kind of a way to save bandwidth and stuff like that. <clears throat> we don't need this, but I guess we might as well make sure that it's loading properly. Let me copy and paste the file name. Yes, that's correct. Oh, it's duh. It's the type of text JavaScript, not source. You're probably all laughing at me. 
Um, we're not really trying to hide these images. I just want to kind of sh remind you of how the jQuery kind of syntax works. Now, now if we reload this page, these images just be gone because that's what we told jQuery to do. He said, find all the images on the page and hide them, which is basically it applies the CSS of display none to each of those images. That's not what we want to do, though, of course. What we want to do is a different function on them. But what function do we want to do? Well, that's that's the beauty of this plugin is we want to create our own function. It's going to be called this title block. So that we're not going to hide it. We're going to title block these babies. So that's how ultimately we want to call it. That's how easy we want to make this. This is the code. So we have our HTML on the page. There's some images. They have titles. And with, with our, our JavaScript, all we have to do is load the JavaScript library, load our plugin, and then just call this one little line of code, and it will work all the magic for us. That's the beauty of a plugin. And it's chainable. Like if, if we wanted to uh, call our, slide, our, our, our title block and uh, apply a click function, we could do that. Uh, uh, that's kind of the the point of these plugins is they 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 can exist. They can be chainable with other functions as well. It's just it's the smart way to kind of extend jQuery. So that's the goal. Now we need to write the plugin to actually do it. So we're going to jump into what the structure of a plugin looks like, which is a bit like this. Uh, I guess we probably won't. Um, get too nitty gritty here. This is a, a little kind of a wrapper for this so that we can use the dollar sign within this uh, 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 plugin without worrying about other things interfering with that dollar sign thing. Uh, I don't know how much I want to get into this. Um, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Title block. This is a this is what we're gonna take the opportunity here to 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 be smart with our plugin and and set up some defaults which are are you know just like they say defaults. There are things that are gonna be variables that we're gonna want to have access to while we're while we're in the plugin. They could be something like, do you want to pass in the font size? Do you want to pass in the background color? Do you want to, you know, uh, have the thing slide in for the left or right? They're just options. They're just ways to make our plugin smarter so that when someone were to call this plugin, they can just pass in a few parameters and change the whole way that it works. Uh, we're we're definitely going to to have some defaults, but um uh, and, and basically parameters that you can pass in. But let's just let that sit for now uh, uh, and, and, and continue with the structure of the plugin. Yeah, so that's that. And then this is kind of where we're going to name it. Title block function config so that's 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 the structure of our plugin named title block doing okay so far but this function needs to return something to be of any use so it needs to return something to be of value so let's see how we're doing there and see if we've kicked out any errors I wouldn't be surprised but we'll just we'll just have to see now we're doing okay. I mean, it's not doing anything, of course, but Firebug, our trusty console down here, would yell at us since we're already loading it on the page that it would yell at us if we had any grievous syntax errors already, which we don't. So, okay, so th this is kind of the area that we want to focus on. This is where where we've, we've created this new plugin. Um, this In this particular style of plugin, we need to be looping through every single one of the elements that was selected when it was passed to this plugin. You see that this, this um, we've selected all the images on the page with this jQuery selector. Not just one thing, like it would be if it had an ID, because there can only be one thing on a page with one unique ID here, but we want this plugin to work on both of these two images, right? So we can't just return this, we need to return this for 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 every one of the the things that have been passed to it. So we're going to 
have to use this each function. So that should be that. And now, now we can get into the nitty gritty of what we want this, what this, this plugin to actually do. So we can start thinking about the different things that need to happen. Maybe it would be best to look at um, the kind of the ultimate goal of the HTML in Firebug, perhaps, maybe that would be useful. Um, so here's the div with a class of image. Remember that we don't have a div with class of image anymore. That's not there. So one of the things that we're going to need to do is wrap that image in a div with class of image. And then we have this H2 tag down here. That doesn't exist. Remember that? So one of the things that we're going to have to do is pull that title attribute out of that image and make an h2 element out of it and, and append that inside of this div with class of image. And then in the inside of that needs to be wrapped in a span. Then we need to um, apply these spacers as we need to. So we have a lot of work to do. Fortunately, the, the chain ability of jQuery is just really cool that way and we can just, you know, we can select our image and we can just keep doing stuff and doing stuff and doing stuff to it. Uh, uh, and then and, and get where we need to get. So you'll see how kind of smart that looks in a minute. First, we need to set up a few um, variables that we're going to need. Basically just one, the image. What we're doing is caching the selector. This. So that seems a little weird, but uh, this in this context is the particular image that we're on right now in this each function. So this, this, this function right here is going to run twice in the context of, of our little environment. It's going to, it's because of this selector, it's going to find two images in the HTML and it's going to run once for each of those two images. So we just want to get our hands on this so that, so that we don't have to keep using that selector over and over, which is slow. Uh, the image. Now we can start doing stuff to the image. So what do we need to do to this image? Well, for one thing, we need to wrap it in that class, a div with the class of image. Remember, it's just as easy as this with jQuery. J div, uh, uh, div class image. And we'll end it right there and we'll save it. And this is a good opportunity for us to finally start seeing this plugin do some work. So let's go back to plugin and see if it's done its thing. Let's use Firebug and we'll, we'll inspect and kind of drill down to this. And you can see that now these images in the HTML here have been wrapped in a div of class of image. It's, it's done its job. This plugin has found both of these two images and wrapped them in a div of class of image. So it's doing its job. We can keep trucking away doing the rest of the stuff that we needed for it to do. We'll take away that semicolon because when we're chaining things, we don't end with semicolons. We just keep going. So, okay, now we need to get that H2 in there, you remember? Um, so we need to append that H2 to this div of class of image. But right now, the context where we're at right now is we're still kind of focused on the image itself. We need to move up one level in the HTML to this div that we just appended. So we just go like this, parent. Now we're working with that div. So now we can append something. We're going to go append... H2. That's going to. Oh, I forgot the closing bracket here. But it's going to put a new blank H2 element inside of, of, of the div. Now I would like to be working with that H2. So at this point, to move back down the chain a little bit, I need to, I'm going to find it. So now our current context is find h2. Now our current context is the h2 itself. Now I want to put some stuff in that h2. That h2 is empty right now. What do I want to put in it? I want to put in what, what people have for the title attribute in the HTML. This stuff, title equals. This is the, the context that we want to use for that, for that the, the cool little overlay blocks. So how do we yank in that value, that content? 
we're going to make the inside of that H2, we're going to replace all the HTML inside it with the image attribute title. So that's that. It, 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 we're in the context of the H2, and we replace all the inside guts of that H2 with what we've pulled out of the title attribute of that image. And then remember, we don't just want the H2. We want to wrap everything in that H2 in a span itself. That's part of the, the markup that we have created for this thing. So again, we can use the wrap, but we'll use the wrap inner instead of wrap, which wraps the outside of it. We'll wrap inner with a span. Now there's a, a few things left to do. So if, again, if we come back to the the non-plugin version of this, we're getting pretty close. We have we have this div with a class of image. We've wrapped it. We've had the, we've 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 created the H2. We've created the span, and we've we've dumped this content in there. But remember, where there's a break. There needs to be a, a spacer on either side of that break. That's the one thing left that we need to accomplish with our plugin. So now, now that we need to, uh, okay, the context that we're at right now is still the H2. So we're going to use this find command again to get targeted down to that break because that's kind of the context that we need to be at at this second. Find the break element. And... Before it, we're going to insert some HTML, span, class of spacer. And these spacers will collapse in Internet Explorer if we don't put something inside of it. So we're going to put a non-breaking space inside of it. Span. And we're going to do the same thing, but after it because we want to put one right before it and right after it. And that's all we need to do right now. Let's save that and, 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 and go back to the plug-in version of our demo. Ta-da! It's doing its thing, isn't it? That's all there is to it. We are going to continue with this a little bit and at pass some options in so you can see how that works. But we have just gone from zero to creating our first jQuery plugin in just a matter of minutes here. It's not that difficult. It's nice just to have this sitting around kind of as a template that you can use. Uh, so, of course, there'll be a download with the screencast with this code in it. Uh, but it's showing you just how like beautifully chainable jQuery is and how we can you know basically create our own functions. We just created this from nothing. If this wasn't here, this is this is our plugin co code that we just wrote. I'll delete that and I'll reload it. I'm going to reload this. It's going to come up with a error, or it should. And now if we ro reload it while it's open, it'll error out. And it's going to tell us title block is not a function it's because it's not a function it's not part of built-in jquery of course we just wrote it from scratch so if we <clears throat> put that back in and reload the page now title block is a function it does this magic trick so pretty cool of course this is dependent on some css and stuff that's already been written and is already included in this page but that's not as what we're focusing on today but you can go poke around at that css with the download if you want to check it out so let's though show you how you can pass in parameters to plugins because a lot of plugins most plugins in fact have this ability so what's the syntax for passing in parameters with a plugin it's curly braces and then you can uh, start passing stuff in here so we're going to um, make a make a uh, 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 pass in a parameter here but I want to explain what that parameter is going to be remember how uh, when, when we rolled over this image that yellow box pops up that has that stuff in there. Well, now at this point it's kind of redundant with what's going on here. There already is something, uh, a text over this image that explains what it is. So it's a little redundant. Perhaps we want to get rid of that. I think we would want to get rid of that by default. 
But maybe we should have a parameter that if people don't want to get rid of that, that that's an option that they have. So let's look at what we want the syntax to be like from, from a calling this plugin perspective. We're going to say remove title um, false. Um, well, let's put it at true just for this second. So we're going to pass in that we want to remove the title. But of course, there's no code written for that yet in the plugin. Let's go write that code quick. The default is going to be to, true. So that's going to match this. Remove title, true. And there can be as many of these as you want as defaults. Just comma separate them. And now we're going to need to get that value from outside of this function right there. So how do we do that? Well, that's why we... we passed in this with the function originally we can pull that out with this extend magic so that's that but we need to pass this a bunch of stuff for one thing so that's kind of the, the weird line that's necessary to to yank in this stuff from out here and then we can start setting variables based on it um, we have one variable set up here another variable that we want though is remove title equals config dot remove title so this value of remove title that we now have access to is going to be true by default or if we set it to false here that false will override it and this will be false so this value is going to be true by default or whatever it gets set to that's the whole purpose of having parameters is that they have default values but they can be overridden so what do we want to do first of all if that value is true we want to remove the image so while we're down here Let's write that logic if remove title and it's it's a boolean so we can just we can just literally write it like that if remove title because it'll either be true or false um, if it's true though which is basically that's what this if statement is the image and the image is remember is 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 this it's the the current image that we're working with remove attribute title. So it's set to true for right now, which is the same thing as not passing in any parameters at all. Let's try that. Let's go X. Let's not pass in any parameters at all. And we'll reload this. That is going to be gone. Oh, it should be gone. Something's wrong. Um, I wonder if... We might need to call this. Let's call it inside of this. Maybe that will work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ooh. Now we need to troubleshoot stuff. Remove title. Remove title. Remove title. Okay, well, that was, I'm sure, totally useless to both you and me because I don't know what really happened there. I just was kind of copying and pasting things around to make sure that the names of everything was spelled correctly and stuff, and now it's just magically started to work. Again, if we firebug down to this image, we can look at the HTML for that image, and notice it does not have a title attribute anymore. Thus, when we mouse over it in the browser window, it doesn't pop up. That's the behavior that we wanted by default, but... 
we wanted to have that be overridable, remember? So I'll jump back to Coda quick and jump back to where we call this plugin. Um, well, let's just rewrite it. If we we can pass to it now, remove title as false. That should leave it there. If we cross our fingers and try again, let's reload it. And yes, it's back now because because of the little logic that we wrote. This little if then basically if statement, if this evaluated to false, so it didn't run this little two lines of code here that which would remove the title. So now we have, uh, we know how to pass in an option and retrieve that value and run with it. So if you wanted to add more, you could add like font size is 20 pixels or something. And then, and then you would have access to it. You could set the font size is equal to, um, oh gosh, we're really running with it now, aren't we? Um, you could use it then like in the span, for example, you could say style equals font size. I wonder, <laughs> I had no plans to do this per se. Plus font size plus. <laughs> I have no idea if this is going to work or not. This is a chunk, and then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. total mystery 20 pixels. I wonder if that will work. Yeah, it did. It made the font size smaller, but that was now it's too small. What was it originally? The, um, let's bump it back up, but we'll bump it back up not by a default, but we'll pass in what size we want it to be. I can't believe that worked. Uh, <laughs> font size. We'll make it 24 pixels. So when we're calling this plugin, we're passing in that overriding value. And we're back up to original size. We have that kind of control now. Very cool. Can pass in all kinds of stuff. Do we want it to come out from the left? And then we would change what we do in the plugin a little bit to accommodate for that type of thing. So that's it. Uh, jQuery kind of part three, building a plugin. Hopefully that was just as rambly as you expected it to be from my from my new post here at the Chicago office. I'm hoping to get this out on Thursday. So if you are the type of person that watches these when they come out, you're watching it on Thursday, which is like the 30th, I guess. The 31st, which is Friday, I'll be in Florida at the Front End Dev Conference. Um, so, you know, kind of short notice, especially if you're not from Florida, but if you haven't heard of it yet, I'm going to be there and it's only like $129 or something for a whole day of events from a bunch of cool speakers. Uh, it's my first time ever speaking at a conference, so hopefully it's gonna it's gonna be a, be a little bit. It's gonna be about jQuery, and it's gonna be a little bit like this, and me just kind of talking at you a bunch about a bunch of the useful ways to use it, real world examples of using jQuery. Uh, so that's it, folks. Remember, you can visit CSSTricks.com throughout the week for more articles, of course, on interesting things. And you can, if you need help, you can visit the forums. You can visit our sweet sponsors and all that stuff. Until next time, folks, I'll see you later. Bye.